Welcome to the Marvelous Moms Club podcast. Discover yourself, break out of mediocrity, and become the mom you've always aspired to be. Here's your host, Kirsten Tyrell. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Marvelous Moms Club. I'm so excited to be chatting, chatting, chatting with the amazing (laughs) Faith Krug. She is a beautiful mom. She has daughters and she's going to tell you all about them. And we're going to hear her story. She owns an amazing company, which she's going to tell you guys about. But I'm going to let her do most of the talking and share her story with you. So welcome to the podcast, Faith. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah, so we have... um... We have two little girls uh, currently. Um, our oldest, she's almost six. Her name is Kaziah, and our two-year-old is Chloe, and we have a third one on the way uh, due in January. So this has just been like just a godsend because when I was 11 or 12 years old, um, doctors told me because I have a rare blood condition that I would probably never have kids. So wow. when I met my honey, we were um, we were just pen pals. Um, many, many years ago, it was like 12 years ago. Um, we were just really good friends and eventually we figured, well, you know what, if we ever get married, like we're going to probably just adopt. And, Mm -hmm. um, we found out just a few months after we had gotten married that we're pregnant and we were like, what? (laughs) That's not supposed to happen. (laughs) Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And so it was a very high risk pregnancy, um, because Mm -hmm. we're not supposed to get pregnant. And, um, she tried coming early a few times, and so it was it was super scary. But man, like wow, it was it was beautiful. It was awesome. And um, afterwards, we're like, well, hey, like she came. We're like, maybe, maybe we can have more. And yeah, um, we struggled with um, infertility issues and stuff, and we were having some big issues because we'd be able to get pregnant, and we'd lose the baby, and we'd get pregnant, and we'd lose the baby. And the furthest I was able to carry was about 10 weeks and it was just like it was just devastating and that had happened three times and it just it just uh, just killed us and um we were just really really down and I remember being at Disneyland because I'm obsessed with all things Disney (laughs) and we were with my mom and my aunt and I just remember like laying in bed and I turned over to my husband and I was like babe babe we're we're pregnant and he was like, you know, okay. And he's like, well, did you take a test? I told him, well, no, like we're pregnant. And I just feel like God is just telling me like, it's, it's okay. Like this time it's okay. And he just kind of looked at me funny and was like, okay. You know, like just the cute little pat on the shoulder. Okay, honey, I love you. Go back to bed. And, um, lo and behold, about yeah, eight and a half months, eight months later, we had Chloe and, wow. um, it was just, just an awesome, awesome experience because just through that pregnancy, like it was the first time I just had so much peace about it. And I just knew like, oh, God's got this, like, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. He's, he's got this, this little baby's going to be okay. And, um, so after Chloe came, we were, we had, we've been pursuing adoption. And so we went through all of our classes and stuff and, um, we're still in that process. So we still have in our hearts to adopt, but, um, we, We've been praying. We got pregnant again last year. And again, we lost that baby. And it's just been like, just so, I don't know, just that weight. Like it hurts so bad, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, like what's wrong with me? I just don't understand. And my husband had some medical issues come up last year. And um, they told him, well, now it's just double whammy. Like you guys cannot have any more kids. Like you guys are both done. Wow. We were like, oh, like this just, this sucks so bad, but you know what? Like God's got this. It's okay. We've got two gorgeous little girls um, and whoever God has uh, for us out there to adopt, like it's going to be good. And um, so, yeah, I, <laughs> lo and behold, wow. just, yeah. several, several weeks ago, we found out we we're pregnant. And again, like it was just this like overwhelming, just crash of peace. Like I just felt like God was like, I got this. I got this. Wow. Everything's going to be okay. That's amazing. So how far along are you right now? You don't know what it is yet, do you? Nope. Nope. We are almost nine weeks. Almost oh my gosh. Weeks. That's so, so exciting. We're, we're good. Yeah. And that's so this cool. time like, I went into my doctor. I had like an early prenatal appointment and stuff. And so they checked everything and they're like, everything looks great. Like the baby's not positioned weird. Like it's not in some weird spot. Like everything looks super healthy. 
And they said, like, your hormones are crazy, which is good. <laughs> and I said, yes, I've been so sick. I haven't gone anywhere. I've been like a hermit in my house the last several weeks. Like, we don't go anywhere. I mean, we do go places, but it's usually just my husband takes the girls and I'm hugging my beautiful ivory bowl, as I call it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so but sick. you're so grateful it's, for that ivory bowl, right? When you have I struggled really so am. much to get pregnant and stay pregnant. It's such a good thing. Yes. Yeah, no, and, cool. it, and it really is because like in the past when we've been pregnant and I just feel like it's just not right. When I've gone into the mm-hmm. doctor, they're like, yeah, it's not positioned well. It, you're going to lose baby. Like you're probably going to lose baby. You're probably going to lose baby. So it was such a relief and just a confirmation that like, again, like God's got this when we went in mm-hmm. and they were like, it looks great. Like we can hear the heartbeat. There's a strong heartbeat. And yeah, we're, we're so excited and I've been just deathly sick. And so they're like that, that's a good sign. Everything looks so good. <laughs> We want you to be super, super sick. <laughs> right? I know. Yeah. No, it, it's it the only is, time it's, in it's life good. that's good. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I think, you know, so many times, like, it's crazy because during these miscarriages, like, I've been so quiet about them and I don't talk to people about them. And, mm-hmm. like, it's, it's probably really selfish, but a, a piece of me is like, well, you know, if I'm going to grieve, like, I just want to grieve by myself. Like, I don't want, I don't want people to know. And that's yeah. so silly because really like you're just putting yourself in a position of just absolute isolation. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like I've just, I hate people feeling sorry for me. I, like my whole life, I just, I don't like it. And I remember when my grandma died years ago, everybody just coming up to me and giving me a hug and telling me how sorry they were. I remember thinking like, well, like you shouldn't be sorry for me. Like <laughs> she's in a better place. I'm fine. And, <laughs> Yeah, like I'm fine. Like just like leave leave me alone, and you know I'll cry my tears and stuff elsewhere. Uh, you know, in a in a yeah. private area, I just don't like grieving and, and crying and stuff in front of people. But I've gotten a little bit more open about sharing how many miscarriages we've had, and mm-hmm. um, I think it's it's been good because it's amazing. I've had so many girlfriends of mine like private message me on Facebook or shoot me a text and was like, hey man, I've had miscarriages too. And I didn't know you did. And like, I've been really quiet. And and it's just a bummer because when I hear them say that, I'm like, well, snap, like (laughs) I'm a leader, right? Like faith is a leader. Like, why are we doing this? Like, I need to, I need to step up my (laughs) game. And like, I need to be a little more transparent about some of my struggles and, um, you know, and things that, that have hurt. And man, like looking back, I didn't, now I know, but in the moment, like, I didn't know how depressed I was. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, not, like, I went through that very much so by myself. And my husband's incredible. And he was with me every step of the way. But, like, I needed some other women who'd gone through something similar, you know, to yeah. to come and just lock arms with me and say, hey, like, we can get through this together. But, uh, like, looking back, I just, I can't believe how depressed I was. You know, and my... Right personality is naturally like really outgoing and I'm, I'm happy and we're always doing something and we're on the go. And just looking back, like, I just can't even believe that person that I was, you know, and truly it was because, um, maybe I was a little prideful in sharing my story. Like I didn't want to appear weak or, or whatever, because I'm depressed or I'm sad. And that's just not Mm -hmm. the case because Mm -hmm. I believe with all my heart that, you know, when you share some of those struggles, like that makes you stronger. (laughs) And, yeah, it does. You know, then it, it encourages someone else's story or someone else to to be brave or to feel like they can share their story too. And so I've well, been and really we get so to make it- prideful with like wanting people to help us and and share with us, but in an instant we want to be needed and we want to help other people. And so trying yep. to bottle it up and have pride about it, like you're really withdrawing an opportunity for somebody else to show you love and you don't want that like you don't want people to close off from you so even aside from like the being able to grow and have that camaraderie with somebody who knows what you're struggling with it's just amazing like the bonding that needs to happen and and also just the opportunity for service that you give other people when you open up about things I think it's a fine line though like I think there's parts of it you have to be able to process privately because it is like Mm -hmm. it's a really deep emotion anything like anything that's a struggle is so deep it's not just it's not a surface level thing or it wouldn't be a struggle but I think Mm -hmm. yeah I think the healing comes when you're able to have that connection with other people yeah absolutely 
like I've always been a big proponent on, you know, guarding your heart. And that comes with sometimes just being careful how much you share um, and with mm-hmm. whom, because some things truly are just private and, and it's okay to grieve, you know, privately sometimes. But like my husband and I, we've always had this um, kind of this rule of thumb and we've applied it in our marriage and parenting and in every aspect of our lives together. But when we are currently going through something, we kind of put this bomb shelter over ourselves. And we invite a few people in to experience that and, and to kind of walk um, through the difficulties or the trials and stuff that are, we're going through. But mm-hmm. as soon as like we've, we've kind of gotten through that difficult time, we'll take that bomb shelter off of our lives and we share it with everybody. And we've always used that because, you know, like we don't want the whole world to know what we're going through as soon as we're going through it. Right. <laughs> but mm-hmm. right. There's, you still need to be able to share your story. So we have quite a few friends, you know, that I'm learning this now, but a few friends and some mentors that we've invited into our lives as we're going through something really tough. So whether it's a miscarriage or, you know, we're having spats in our marriage or we're having difficulty parenting our girls, um, we invite a few people in and we tell them what's going on and however long it takes to kind of get through that, that season, um, then we lift off that bomb shelter and we tell everybody, hey, like, this is what God brought us through. Like, ah, oh, you know, this is the lesson that we learned. In this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's well, a good. I feel like that's a good method because it keeps it keeps it very personal. But then you're not. It's not even. You're not dragging everybody else through it to where yeah. you're, they're susceptible to a ton of emotional turmoil. But the people who you know right. are just there to be supporting roles are there. So I think that's good. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about, I love all of your story. I love that you, like, we seriously immediately went vulnerable and it was so good. Um, but what, tell me a little bit about like your business and when did that start? I mean, you, you and your husband have been together for how many years did you say? Um, we've been, we've known each other for 12 and we've been married for almost seven. Okay. So when... When did you guys kind of, did the woodworking start with your husband? Did it start with you or was it something that just kind of came to be together? That's a good question. So actually, um, a little over a year and a half ago, um, my husband, he's a carpenter by trade. And um, since we've been married, like our hearts are just to be entrepreneurs. Like we've always been like, man, we want to be our own boss. And we want our girls to see that if you are willing to work hard, um, and dream really, really big that you can succeed. Like you, you can do it. I love it. And, uh, that is not always, that's not always easy. (laughs) Our girls have definitely (laughs) seen us struggle and, and cry a few tears. Um, but no, it's, it's, it's good. Um, we, I'm from Arizona and my husband is Mm -hmm. from Wisconsin. So we were homeschoolers growing up and we were, um, pen pals. And so we just like write each other little letters and stuff back and forth. Uh, this was 12 years ago. And, um, wow. it was just, it was really cute. It was really sweet. And, um, eventually we, um, just our, our friendship ended up progressing. We had lots and lots of drama and stuff and crazy things in between. But when we got married seven years ago, I moved from Arizona to Wisconsin and it was just absolute culture shock for me because like I'm a desert rat and mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm, <laughs> I, I like having the shopping mall just, you know, 10 minutes away from me and Chick-fil-A yeah. just right around the corner. And then we, <laughs> I moved, I moved to Wisconsin and we are 45 minutes from the nearest Walmart. Like oh. <laughs> there's Amish buggies everywhere. Like it's beautiful. It's gorgeous, but it was just culture shock. Like, Oh right. my gosh, right. this is crazy. And, um, like his family is beautiful and wonderful. Um, but like, I'm a girl, like, you know, my, I left my whole family, like my family's in Arizona. And so experiencing this new place, um, it was just, it was just scary and just kind of weird. And so, um, we bought our house in this teeny tiny little town of about 1200 people. And, mm-hmm. um, like, I was like, okay, well, I have to do something. Like he was, he was going off to work and you know, I'm home and we were pregnant with our first. And so I started sewing. And I opened up an Etsy shop and it's just kind of funny because like I, I got really busy and I was sewing, but it was just, it was just so much and it was just me. And, um, eventually we both, Nate and I both felt like something needs to change. So we packed up everything and we moved to Arizona four years later 
and I was wow. still sewing and stuff. And uh, we got here to Arizona, and um, we we loved it. We plugged into a church that we just adore, and found just a really cool community of people. And Nate, I, like Nate, had been helping me sew, <laughs> and I just told him, "Wow, like, you know, good man. This is just <laughs> not. Yeah, I know he's amazing." And I just told him, "Like, this is just not my calling. Like, this isn't your calling. We're not supposed to sew." <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with sewing. There's nothing wrong with sewing. Okay. <laughs> My sister has right. an incredible sewing business. It's awesome. But it wasn't for us. And so we were just kind of grasping at straws. And a year and a half ago was my dad's birthday. And my whole side of my family on the guy's side, they're all pilots. They they pl- they fly for um just themselves. It's just hobby. And uh, some mm-hmm. of them do some crop dusting and stuff. But they all love airplanes. And so Nate and I, we were sitting down at a table and we were kind of just drawing, just kind of doodling, I guess. And he's like, let's make your dad an airplane. And I was like, what? And he was like, no, no, like not like an airplane, like you're going to fly it. He's like, but let's, let's make an airplane shelf or something he can just put on the wall. And I was like, what, how? And so we were, we just kind of just did some designing. And next thing I know, we built our very first airplane shelf, wooden airplane shelf. And. Um, it took us like weeks to put this thing together. It was just crazy. And the very first one, we give it to my dad for his birthday and, um, he, he loved it. He's like, man, you guys should put these on the internet. Like, this is really cool. And so I was like, well, Nate and I have this philosophy. Like if a door opens, like we walk through it and if it closes in our face, it's fine. But at least we Mm -hmm. can say like we walked through this door. So my dad suggested it. So we, uh, I changed my Etsy shop. It went from sewing, <laughs> like totally. I just deleted everything and I put up this airplane shelf and, and it just flew. Like we could not believe it. We were like, what? And wow. so Christmas came and we were so busy and it's just been incredible because I like watching our stats because like comparative to last year, it's been like, you know, triple and then God has just been so good. And so we work out of our garage <laughs> right now and and actually in our guest room and our whole house, really. But we hand carve our propellers and we have shipped airplanes to 14 different countries around the world. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, It is so cool because we get the girls involved and they help us sand and we're, we're good hot messes by the time we're done. But on occasion, <laughs> on occasion, I'll even let our oldest like stain. <laughs> That's so and fun. Yeah, no, it it has been so cool. But I think like, again, all this had kind of come out of just a place of, of hurt and, and depression, really. And just mm-hmm. a little bit of mourning because we were trying to get pregnant and just kind of grasping. And you now we were grasping at straws, really like, oh, something, something's got to give, something's got to give. And um, yeah, and it was just, it was born out of a place of um, being in a really raw place, I guess. And yeah, kept dreaming and we were just praying like, man, if this is what we need to do, then, then this is just, this is going to fly. And yeah, we've been, yeah. we've been so, it literally did. We had, <laughs> yeah. No, you're exactly right. <laughs> it, it flew <laughs> off the shelves for real. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love that for so many reasons. Like, I think maybe some people listening will be like, wait, what? Like just had a random idea and then it just took off and exploded. But <laughs> The interesting thing about that that you would probably testify to is it wasn't just like this, like, I'm going to just snap my fingers, make this thing, and then it's just going to explode. Like, yes, it was successful, but you had put in the time to learn an industry, like not even woodworking, but like Etsy and learning how to sell a product and really understanding how to create something like that. And it's usually, I was just telling my husband this last night, it's usually never what you set out to do that ends up being the thing you do, right? Like it changes so much that we've, we made a business plan. I started Marvelous Moms Club two and a half years ago, and now I'm in a completely different, I'm still doing the podcast, but financially, like the thing that's bringing us the most money, I never would have ever even considered to be a possibility or even known it was a possibility. And so I just think it's, I think it's really cool how kind of that like blood, sweat and tears, that work that you probably put into the actual physical creation of everything that you do, like I don't know. I just, I love, I also love that you're involving the kids and I love that you guys have come from a place of, of hurt and figured out how to transmute that into something good and something that bonds you even more and something that is productive and that other people can enjoy. And I think that's like, that is really the true vision of the entrepreneur, right? Like 
you yes. have <laughs> you have this thing you're passionate about you're able to put so much energy into it and then people appreciate it and people love yeah. it and people want to buy it and that's the that's the success story right there so yeah, I think that's no. really cool. Congratulations on Thank all you. the flying off the shelves. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yay, yes. I, I think that it's funny because, you know, like on, on social media, I think that we tend to kind of put like the highlights of our lives. And that's fine. Like there's nothing wrong with putting right. the highlights of our lives up on social media. But um, people tend to compare their current selves to our highlights. And, mm-hmm. um, and, and I do the same thing to everybody else. Like I'll compare how I look or where I'm at in my life to someone else's highlight. And, and it's not fair. Like that's not okay. And I yeah. think that it's sometimes it's just, it's kind of funny because people will see, oh, like Nate and Faith are selling tons of airplanes. Like, yay, good for them. But like, hold on you guys. Like you guys don't even know. There have been, there have been weeks, like stretches of weeks that Nate will get two hours of sleep three hours of sleep like every single night for weeks just trying to keep Mm up and you know and as soon as we'll we'll make some money and guess what like we pour it right back into the business and then we're broke (laughs) and then we'll make money and then we'll pour it all back into the business and and I think that it's I'm learning again to just be a little bit more like transparent but it's not always rainbows and butterflies and Mm -hmm. what everybody sees on social media isn't always really how things are and like I've been trying to make a little bit more of a point to kind of put like disclaimers like if I put my my girl a picture of my girls like hugging each other and loving on each other like I take that because I think it's super cute and you know on Facebook I want to see my memories pop up in a few years of how little and adorable they were but really like the likelihood is 30 minutes before that they were tearing each other's hair out you know (laughs) (laughs) exactly yep yep that's so true well and I love what you said (laughs) Like, and you're, like you said a second ago, you're still in the hustle. Like you're still in the entrepreneur hustle. You make money, you put it back into your business. A lot of people think that, oh, once you found something that works, you're just successful and you're done and you're well off and great. But like, even in the industry you're in where it's a product-based business, like this is a business that you'll have to continue to do for the rest of your lives until you find something else or build upon that. But I don't know. I think it's good perspective. I think social media, that's like a whole, I think we've dived into that in various conversations and it's such a tricky space to navigate because it's true mm-hmm. where you want, you never want to compare your, your now to somebody's highlight reel, but, um, right. but it is such a powerful way to share goodness and it's such a powerful yeah, way to market absolutely. a product like yours. So yeah. I don't know. I yeah, think it's just, true. I think it's intent. I think it all comes down to intent and the way that you're trying to share and the way that you are. Cause for me, I'm like, if I'm not on Instagram and I don't do Insta stories, I forget to take pictures of my kids, but it's not that I'm taking pictures of my kids just to show everybody. It's literally just my documentation. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, how can I find this happy medium where I'm not just putting it on social media, but I'm documenting for us. And it's just, it's a mental shift. Anyway, that was totally a tangent, but. (laughs) No, that's good. No, those are some good, good words. Really good words. Right. Just kind of good, different Mm -hmm. perspective of what you're really on there to do versus like what you really need to be doing and what matters the most. So, yeah. Um, okay. So I want to, I want to ask a little bit too, like you have these daughters, you fought so hard to get them. You have another baby on the way. Um, what are, what are some of the things that you feel like are really important for you to be teaching them? You're involving them in the business. And I know in your email to me, and I reminded you before we started recording that there's some really powerful things that you said that you really want to create for your daughters and the types of women that you want them to become. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I've always struggled. I feel like just kind of, this is just this weird thing. And part of me, part of my personality, I don't know, me, is like, I, I want to show my girls what it looks like to just be a powerful, beautiful, wonderful woman. And I don't mean beautiful just on the outside, but I mean like when you walk into a room that you can just shine beauty and people can look at you and know man like like that that person's different and another part of me is like oh no like I just I want to be humble and shh, like it's okay and it's just this uh, this weird battle I have within myself and it's so mm-hmm. funny because <laughs> I know my girls see this and I, I want so badly Nate and I both want so badly to raise confident women who who know what it looks like and what it feels like to love people so deeply and and mm-hmm. to be kind because we live in a world that's so cruel and 
everybody is so quick to just tear you down and, and tell you this and tell you that. And I, and I want to raise our girls and maybe our third girl, whoever this, whatever this little baby is, I want to raise our children to, to be edifier. Uh, how do I put this? To be, to, to be people who edify people mm-hmm. and, and to be ones that are going to lift everybody up. And, and I think that, you know, through that, our girls have seen us have some really difficult times and Nate and I are youth leaders at our church. And so we constantly have high school students in our house quite, quite frequently. And with that, mm-hmm. like these kids have some stuff that they're going through and, and things, you know, they're telling us what's going on in high school and so-and-so said this and you know, so-and-so just died last week and just these terrible things. And, and our girls see that and I know that they hear some of it and I want them to see that although that this world is crazy, like there's nothing we can do to make the world <laughs> less crazy. People are always going to be crazy mm-hmm. and people are going to be cruel, but that they can rise above that and be kind and to be passionate. And I want them to see what it looks like that no matter what people say or the hardships that you go through or where you came from, that if you're willing to dream and to work really hard, that those dreams can come true. And I think that we're so fortunate to to live in a country, in the United States of America, that if we're willing to dream big and to work really, really hard, that those things are a possibility. And, Mm -hmm. you know, Nate and I just, we went on a mission trip to Haiti last year and Haiti just rocked our world. And to be down there and just think, man, like these people, they're, they're dreamers and they're beautiful, incredible people, but they don't have the opportunities that we do here in the United States. Because if Nate and I mm-hmm. just wanted to start up a business, guess what? Like we can go down to the courthouse and apply for an LLC or, you know, do all of these different things. And for the most part, like we have the financial capability to do those things. And those people don't. And yeah. I, I, our heart is that we want to show our girls that, man, it, it is an honor and a privilege to live in this country. And we want to help those people down in Haiti. But we can't help those people unless you guys do something with what you have here first. And mm-hmm. to to be able to raise the funds or do whatever you guys want to do. But I think that even as moms, like not just our kids, but moms, like I think I put this in my um in my email to you initially, but we kind of get stuck in this in this rut that, well, mm-hmm. you know, mom gave up her dreams to raise us children. And and we continue this vicious cycle of over and over again. We see generations of women who give up their dreams to raise their children. And there's nothing wrong with raising children. And if that's your dream to raise children, more power to you. But mm-hmm. sometimes I think moms, when, when they're like, there's got to be something else for me. I, I, like, I love my children and I'm going to continue to love my children and raise my babies. But there's got to be something else. But no, 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 it would be selfish of me. I, I'm going to give up my dream so that they can live their dream. Well, the problem with that thinking is that as soon as that child grows up, they're going to do the same thing. And now we have generations upon generations of get people, women, giving up their dreams for the next generation. Mm-hmm. And the only way to stop that cycle is to stand up and show your girls, your children, your little boys, what it looks like for mom and dad to step out of that cycle and pursue their dreams and show your kids what it looks like to work hard and dream big. I love that so much. I I love everything you've said. I think you're, I'm I'm sure everybody listening is like, I could listen to her all day. It's so calm and cathartic. You're You're a fantastic (laughs) guest. I've loved everything that you've said. It's been very, it's all hit home. So hopefully everybody else listening has enjoyed that. Um, And I love your story. I love your background. I love your business. I think they're so cute, you guys. We've linked to her Etsy shop in the show notes. So go check those out. I think they, we're probably going to have to get one for our kids wall because they're just so cute. Um, So go look them up. (laughs) Um, and then, so I have one final question for you that I ask everybody, and I think you've been summing it up the whole time we've been talking, but what makes you a marvelous mom? You know what? When, when you asked me that in my email, I was thinking, and I'm going to be honest, I Googled what marvelous means. Like, what's the definition of marvelous? <laughs> and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it meant something that is bright, that stands out. And I think, you know, if anything, I, I believe what makes me a marvelous mom is that I'm passionate and, um, and I love hard. Like I, I don't just love deep. Like I, I, I love hard and I hope and I pray that my girls see that. And even in through my mistakes and 
my struggles and um, mom just screwing up that, that they can see that mom still is passionate and mom still loves deep. And I, I pray I that, love that. Um, they will be able to do the same. That's amazing. Perfect answer. There's never a wrong answer to that question, but I love your answer. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you for sharing it. <laughs> Of course. Well, you guys go check out Faith. Go check out her shop. It's it was such a pleasure to chat with you and to be able to share your story. Um, tell everybody where they can find you if you know like the quick URL for. I know that's hard because it's on Etsy, but even your Facebook. Where can they find you on Facebook or Instagram? So it's kind of tricky because it's Forever Memories, but it's the number four and then Ever Memories, and it's all one word. So I am okay. the only one on there. Um, you can find me on Etsy, but on Facebook and Instagram, you have to put two R's. So it's the number four ever RR memories because okay. just a regular forever memories was taken and it made me bummed. <laughs> oh man, but you made it work. <laughs> People will find you on social media. They'll get there. It's totally fine. <laughs> yes. Follow me. Follow me. <laughs> cool. Yep. Go check her out, guys. Well, thank you again, Faith. I appreciate you being here and to the rest of you guys have a marvelous day and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks. Please tell me I'm not the only one who doesn't enjoy spending hours at the makeup counter or even on the makeup aisles at Target. If you are like me and you struggle and you feel like makeup should be fun and not stressful and overwhelming, then you need to check out Mascara Beauty. I am obviously a huge advocate for mascara. It's one of my favorite companies in the entire world. It's my favorite makeup line, and it has saved my life. I can do my makeup while I'm in the line for carpool. I can do it in under five minutes. So if you want to learn more about mascara, go to MarvelousMascara.com to check it out.